Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hard Nine Podcast. Today is April the 10th, uh, coming on the heels of the Cardinals dropping two of three at home to the Phils, and uh, coming on the heels of an off day as we head out to the desert to take on the Snakes, who are also six and seven. Yeah. So, I mean, I, here's the thing. The Cardinals are six and seven through a 13-game schedule, which is not the easiest, okay? That's fine. Um, the thing that sucks is they they should be coming off the heels of three straight series wins when they let a Phillies team that did not play good baseball beat them this weekend. I mean, this week. Like, that Phillies team was not playing like the Phillies team. You'll most likely see if you play them in August or September. Like, Harper wasn't hitting. Um, Schwarber wasn't hitting. Turner wasn't hitting. And I'm also a little bit frustrated because the Phillies got incredibly lucky. Every run they scored was on the freaking bloop single. I swear to God, it was frustrating. But um, you just sounded like Miles Michaelis. It's true though, dude. That Andre Pallante inning where he didn't get an out was ridiculous. Three jam shot through the infield. Like, yeah. what are you gonna do? I think Andre Pallante is Alec Burles in the pitchers. They're just both incredibly unlucky all the time. I swear. I swear. Um, you know, if you would have told me, first of all, just uh, just to rub it in just a, a little bit. Uh, I'm now three of four on the Cardinal picks. Just wanted to get that out there. I should be you three of four, but they, well, they but keep blowing. No it. one plays should be anymore. Um, <laughs> to be fair, you could easily say should have split with the Dodgers, taken the Padres, probably should have swept the Marlins, and should have taken two or three from the You can't the, say should have swept the Marlins. Okay, they got fair. Destroyed. That's fair. But the point is they haven't done any of that. And if you were to yeah. tell me we when I picked – when I picked the Cardinals to win one of three against the Phils, if you were to have told me that Harper would go O for the series, I would have switched it to two of three for the Cardinals. To be fair, just just hit on him alone. Yeah, and if we're being honest, like the Cardinals should have won that first game, dude. Like that Alec Bohm hit down the line in the tenth inning was awful. My God, how lucky can a team get? That was the luckiest series win, luckiest series win I've ever seen in my life. Like and there's gonna be Phillies fans that probably watch this and their blood's boiling right now. But my gosh, dude, Alec Bohm, I don't think he hit a ball over 82 miles per hour. And he had like six hits this series. That it is all on ridiculous. you. You you initiated the Alec Bohm hate last time. That he's is the most all on average you. Average player to ever play Major League Baseball. I swear. I told you there will, it will not be accepted on this podcast. Like, how that guy's it. batting fifth on a Major League Baseball team? I have no idea. But um, that's some, not even. I just some good things so we saw. Game one, Miles with a quality start, struggled early like Miles does. But to go through, give you six and whatever he gave you Seven. with a quality start. Huh? Seven innings. Seven. Sorry, I, I thought it was six and two-thirds, but either way. Uh, Herrera continues to hit. Uh, that first game also hit again today. Let Now, I have been critical of this guy for a while as well, and I know you are a big fan, and when he is on, he is on. But I feel like there's something going on maybe with Ryan Helsley. I – I don't know if it was that loss in 2022. I know he had the injury last year. I don't know what it is. But he was literally great yesterday. He was. I agree. I agree. But it just seems like he's 50-50 anymore. And that's so, when you – He's not, hold though, on. dude. Hold on. When you have a bullpen, time, when you have a bullpen built on the need for a closer at the end, he has to be better than what he has been. That's all I'll say. He gave up a dribbler down the line that old man Arenado kind of get to. <laughs> Two years ago, Arenado gets that ball. Well, that's not who we have at third base now. Well, then what's he supposed to do? He gave up a ball that was hit literally like 72 miles per hour down the line. So you have zero concern over Ryan Helsley? I think he's been really good. Okay, okay. Um, the only reason he gave up an earned run in that outing um, was because they intentionally walked Harper and he came around to score. Okay, that's fair. That's you know I mean, fair. Like he, he, still, didn't, he didn't he give up any hard me. contact. Yeah, but if you're Ryan Helsley, what, his job, he literally threw that slider with the intent to get a ground ball to Arenado. It just snuck through. Like yep, that's sometimes like I get that you need results and that's true, but I'll I'll take what that result all the time. Like give me nine out of ten times that's an out. Like and you know, credit to Alec Bohm, I guess he kept it fair. That's not easy to do, but like I think nine times out of ten that's going straight to Arenado and you got a double play. Um highlight for me of the series, Sonny Gray. And that was your guy. That was your fantastic pick to click on on the bump. Um he was awesome. Like to go six innings. Five innings. Five innings. Five innings. Sixty foot was sixty five pitches. Is that what it was? Five. He threw sixty four like out of his sixty five um, available pitches. Just I I've said it before, and I'll say it again. In, in the last twenty years, there have been certain guys that the Cardinals have had that is essentially 
give me the fucking ball and give me get out of the way. There's only been a handful of them. Uh, Chris Carpenter, John Lackey, Lance Lynn, Adam Wainwright to an extent. You could go back to the Matt Morris if you want to pick and, and Woody Williams, whatever. But I think the other guy is Sonny Gray. And, and I, 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 <laughs> he did hit a salami in San Francisco. Don't <laughs> forget did. that. However, uh, when I texted one of my buddies or told one of my buddies, like, I think people here are going to absolutely love Sonny Gray because he is that bulldog. Like when I saw, I told you, we talked about it on the last spot. When I saw his reaction to potentially having to pitch again in Memphis, I was like, I love this guy even more now. Yeah, he was great. And, you know, when, when I told you that I was frustrated that they told us the pitch count, the Phillies did not take advantage of that. They at did all. not. Like at all. He was cruising. And, and Sonny's normally a guy that's five, six max. Generally speaking, like he's normally not a guy that's going to go seven, eight, even when he's really on just because he's not, a, he's one of those guys that's not afraid to walk someone. If he feels like it's a better move to throw a th- ball on three, one than throw him a cookie. You know what I mean? Blake yeah. Snell is the same way. He's not Blake Snell, but um, he just, he'll throw a lot of pitches. It's just the way that he, he goes sometimes. So I was really impressed that I think that shows you that he can adapt to situations. Like if he had his full hundred pitches that like he normally has, where he can throw 105, 110 if he needs to, I think he probably goes about that outing differently. But because he had 65 and knew he needed to give us some innings, he he um pitched to contact more often and looked really good. And also as a whole, like this this rotation striking out more people than I thought they were going to as a whole so far, which I um, think is a big positive because obviously we saw what happened last year without the shift when you don't do that. Uh, Matthew Libertor was great also on Tuesday. He, I know he has a 3.5 ERA. When you're in the pen and it's early in the year, one run can skew those numbers incredibly. You know, we know oh, that. Oh, it can um, skew for Hells. I mean, for him, but not Helsley. Okay. I want, I want the 2022 pre postseason Ryan Helsley back. That's all I'm saying. I hope it comes back. That's all I'm saying. I don't think he ever left. If you're going to extend him, which I'm, I've talked about not doing, him. right. That's what I went back. Anyway, also, I think. The pen with Jojo Romero. I mean, he's been really, Jojo's really been good. Awesome. Yes, he's, Kittredge comes in today in a tough spot. Zach Thompson today gave you a great inning in two thirds or whatever. It, Keep it, him it, in the it, bullpen, it. right? Huh? You have to. bullpen. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Keep him out there. there. He can be your, especially because you know you're going to have outings from guys like Stephen Matz. Lance Lynn's kind of been this guy. Like we didn't think he would be, but he's been one of these guys. He's thrown a lot of pitches to get through his innings slightly. And today you can. He's had some weird games. He had opening day, and then he had two really, really bad rain starts so far. So they've been really odd Lance Lynn starts. But you know you're going to have guys where they're probably not going to go super deep. And to have a guy, two guys with Libertor and Thompson, you can trust to go two or three innings to piggyback them. That allows you not to extend guys like Kyle Gibson. You know, say you have to go six. Like, you don't. You have two guys that can now piggyback them for a few innings. And I think keeping both those guys up here would be very smart. Um. Also, with that being said – the, I think the quandary it puts you in is you really knock on wood, have no one now ready to be stretched out and come up and start. I think that is the quandary mm-hmm. that if you are the Cardinals, like if there is an injury, people are going to yell and scream and say, well, Zach Thompson should have been a triple A. And logically they're probably correct. Like mm-hmm. it is that fine line that I think as an organization that it's really tough to maneuver between helping the club, but also being smart and having, Mm-hmm. depth where you need it and we know that at some point someone's going to go down and right now i don't know who that next man up if it's not zach thompson that's the quandary it could still that be ha- I, I wonder if well one i would keep zach thompson he when he's in he's throwing multiple innings for me every time that's just how i'd use him so unless it's like one of those where you're in the 11th inning and you have to use somebody um so if he's like if you keep him throwing two to three innings every time he's out there then you can you can have him out there and build him up that way and be fine. Like obviously that's unfortunate, and I don't know who the next guy up at AAA would be. I mean, eventually they're going to have to give Michael McGreevy a start in the major leagues. Like he can't like be it. a AAA forever. You know what I mean? So I think they have options if they need him. Um, but yeah, let's just hope nobody gets hurt for a while. But I obviously can't control that. I want to ask you a question though. Yep. We talked a lot about Arenado last week. Oh, uh, her last episode. And you said you weren't picking him. We were hoping that was going to turn the tide. It didn't. Um, <laughs> and here's, here's the thing that's frustrating for me about Nolan. It, he gets so antsy and we've talked about this so much. Like today I, I was texting you when he was up in that big situation um, and he brought, he drove in a run, but doesn't it feel like in that situation, it's like Nolan has to either hit a homer or a double or we're losing this game. And it just, we need him to have that moment where it's like, okay, late in the game, you're the winning run, hit the homer. 
Like we need you to have it. When is it going to happen as a Cardinal? And he just doesn't do it. When no. is he going to have his Cardinal moment, his big moment late in the game? And I'm not talking about last year when we were already 35 games below 500 and he walked off the Marlins. I'm talking about in a meaningful game where he has his moment. It's coming it's eventually, been, right? It's been a long time. Obviously, opening day, 2021, 2022. Yeah. That was, that was one. one. There's been others. Has he been here? Is this his fourth year here? I didn't, yeah. Okay. Good Lord. I, I lose track of time so badly. Um, but it does feel like it's it needs to happen. I, I I'm not. I mean, I coached high school baseball. That's where it ends, right? So I am not a hitting coach. I mean, I've helped people hit whatever. It just seems to me that he is so like he's so handsy at the plate. Like it looks like the lower half isn't being used at all. I don't know. I've seen people speculate that maybe the back is still sore. That's all pure speculation. I haven't heard anything that way. But when you look at it, there is no drive. Like there is no drive mm-hmm. on the on his swing at all, and that does make you concern either an injury or there's something going on, maybe in through these little that's wickets what, in that's here. What I think it is like there's and also like it almost some people have speculated that it's like an eye thing, which it could be, but I'm not going to speculate that. I have no idea because um, he blinks a lot, which he's done forever. I think that's just it's the Correct. only thing he does. Like some guys just blink a lot. Um, I. I don't know, and I, I think he's going to get going, and we need to get into this now, I guess, since we're here, because the offense has been the biggest problem so far, in my opinion. Um, the thing that we thought was the biggest strength coming into the season. I have a question for you, and you can yeah. take this either way, and I don't blame anyone that feels one way or the other about this, because I think both make sense. Okay, I get, I'm going to give you two options and tell me where you lead. Okay, one, are you more optimistic because the part of the team that's struggling – is the team, the, the part of the team that you believe is going to come around, right? Okay, so you're more optimistic that the pitching's been better than you thought and the offense has been worse, but we believe the pitch, the offense is going to come around eventually. That's option one. Option two, are you more pessimistic because realistically the pitching's probably pitching as well as you could have expected at this point, and there's still a game under 500 against you know some solid teams, but not like not everyone's the best team that they're facing. Um, that's a, I love that you asked me this question because I actually had a – discussion on Facebook with somebody today about this. I'm going to go with option A. Here's why. Um, I think it is 100% valid to go with option B. It really truly is. As a fan, I completely believe that. But if you look at, if you just try to look at silver linings, right? You played probably what is, and I looked through their schedule. I didn't see a 13 game stretch. It's going to be any more difficult than that. Every, every team playoff team. I know the Padres didn't make it, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're a playoff they're a solid contender. Team. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And you're on like, the road. So that's so what it's I, tough. And, and obviously you're going to Arizona now. So the 16 game stretch, we've talked about it. You're not going to, there's not, when I look through their schedule, there's not that stretch again. It's not like you have a break here or there just looking yeah. through it. Potentially there are teams who could pop up. We don't know about, but you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying Two. You haven't had Nupar, you haven't had Tommy, you haven't had DC. All of sunny. those are fair. Sun, sunny, right? I agree. Sunny and Not Wilson fair. for a few games. Also, to be fair, you're playing in probably outside of San Diego, where you did take two of three, and LA, where obviously the Dodgers were hot to come out. The worst weather you could ever play in here in St. Louis. Like it has not been great. I mean, it's early. The ball does not fly at Bush Stadium. I think Walker I, should have like four homers. It feels like it feels like to me it's one because. It's early, but I, what I did say also in the thing that I, I was talking to somebody at Memorial Day is when I think I'm going to reassess. I think that's when you can actually look. You almost have two months. Uh, it's at the very end of May, last Monday okay. in May. So you have two months in, right? I think that's when it's fair to reassess because you've got the A's coming up. You've got some teams coming up that you should put it on. Um, and then you start to get into division play with the Pirates, the Reds, the Brewers, the Cubs. Like I think that's the time to start to assess it more because this is 13 games of small sample size. We've seen them rattle off 17 in a row not too long ago. So I'm going with I'm going with option A, but I totally understand option B. Yeah, I think you could go either way with it. For me, there's no sign of this pitching staff getting worse. Lance Lynn looks good, man. Like he really he does. does. He's punching out a lot of people. He made some really good hitters look silly today. You know, I know those Phillies, um, a lot of them are struggling. I know Trey Turner and Bryce Harper, they're not themselves right now. And I get that. We're saying that about Arenado and Goldie ourselves. Um, so it is different. They're not facing, like, peak Harper and Turner. But you're still you're still making some really good hitters look a little foolish today, I thought. Um, and he's striking out a lot of people. He has to be up to, like, around 10 or 11 Ks per nine, I would guess, on the year so far. Um, I don't have that stat handy, but just from my recollection, I would imagine it's up there. Um, so th- he looks good. Steven Mass looks fantastic. Sonny looked great. 
Um, Kyle Gibson had one really bad start, one really good start. So we'll see. I'm sure he'll land somewhere in the middle there. And um, I'm missing someone again. I always forget one. Oh, Miles. Yeah, Miles me. looks okay. Oh, he Miles. looks like Miles. Um, Lance, so we, I, not to interrupt you, Lance hmm. has 18 Ks in 13 and two thirds innings. So is that 10 or 11 Ks for that? Uh, yeah, sure. It's I over mean, I'm 10. not going to do the math. It's, it's over, over 10. 10. Yeah. Right. So he looks good. Like he's not going very deep, but I, I explained that earlier. There's a lot of weird. All three of his starts have been very strange with either weather or opening day, and there's abnormal starts. He'll settle in, I think, around six or every start. But my answer would be, I would agree with you because I just, I believe in Arenado and Goldschmidt. Like I do, I know they're getting older. I get it, but I'm going to believe in them until they make me not believe in them. And also I was talking about this earlier on um, dealing the cards. I, uh, I was on that earlier. And we Is were that what that it's earlier. called now? Dealing yeah, the cards? Did not know yeah. that. Yeah, well, um, and he, they, he asked me um, what I thought about Arenado and Goldschmidt. And now I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, Jesus and I said my Christ. thought, and if they should be moved at all from two and four in the order, that should ever happen. And my response was, I'm going down with them. We built around them. They're betting second and fourth. And if we lose, we lose. And if we're good, we're good. Like for me, I'm go- I'm willing to go down with those two as a fan. And if I were the team, I'd be willing to go down with them. And I believe in them. I think they're going to turn it around. That's my, my other response. My other response would be, what are your other options at this point? Well, the premise was like if Walker and Noop are eventually uh, and guys like that eventually end up being better. I'd like to get to Jordan Walker later. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we talked about game two. Uh, it was great to see Gorman with the home run. Um, three in his last three games. Yeah, like Four we days. know that that's what he does. He gets streaky. And, you know, that's really nice. You look at heading out to Arizona. It was interesting. I did some looking. Uh, He's from Arizona. Both, the, both the Cardinals and Arizona, about middle of the pack when it comes to pitching ERA. <laughs> Obviously, I think. Uh, Arizona's played in Coors Field, so you can take that for whatever you want. Um, But in hitting Arizona near the top in damn near every category, that team is going – this is going to be a test for the Cardinals pitching staff, and we'll get to that in a little bit too. But, but again, I thought JoJo really good. I thought Zach Thompson was really good. The bullpen has been pretty solid. Where where do you stand – let me ask you this then. Where do you – where on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being, um, oh, shit, we have a problem – Obviously, one being no concern. Where do you stand right now with your level of concern over Goldie? Three. Okay. And I think my reasoning is because I don't expect him to be 2022 Goldie. I think – here. here's what I was wondering the other day. Like, could he end up falling completely off and being a 650 OPS guy? Like, yeah. Okay, that happens to guys when they get older. It happens sometimes. I just don't think he looks that different. Like he doesn't look, he's not getting beaten on fastballs even as much as he was last year. Um, he's, I think his time is a little bit better. I think, I think he's going to be around 800 OPS. Like I really do. And yeah, that's not the Goldie that you were expecting two years ago. But if that's your new reality that he's going to be 25, 30% above, I mean, 20 to 25% above league average as your two hole hitter, that's fine. Two things I'll say. Uh, I'm probably in that three to four area as well. Um, yeah. One, we've talked before, he's a, a notorious slow starter. May is his yeah, month. Uh, yeah. Two, the other good thing that can be for him, he's going to Arizona this weekend. Like, that could be yeah. exactly what he needs. Day off today, smart move by Ali. Also, by the way, thought Ali managed the series incredibly well. I don't, I nobody so. will talk about that because they lost two of three and everybody seems to hate Ali for some reason. But I thought he had, I thought he managed everything incredibly he's been well. Aggressive and he's been aggressive with his bullpen decisions. And, you know, it doesn't always result in a win, but he's keeping his team in games Agreed. where they had chances to win, and I like it. Also, you see the bitching about the lineups. We've got to stop that, first of all. The guys have to produce. He's trying to get figure something out with matchups with pitchers and whatever it is. You can argue the Brandon yeah. Crawford thing all you want. I I get that. I, he's going to play every once in a while. Can we talk about that um, for one second? Sure, absolutely. I think I think it's very smart for them to be hyper-aware of Mason Wynn's usage I because do they do not have a shortstop behind him. I said that last week. Like, I said yeah, that on like the pod you, last week. That that's yeah, why. Yeah, you you can't get in a situation where Crawford is starting for a month because when tweaks a hamstring or he just and when is a young dude and here's a lot of people see like young guy. Okay, well, that means he should have more energy. It's not an energy right. thing. His body's not used to the grind of a major league baseball season. So the dude's 22 years old. Recently turned 22 years old. So I'm okay with it. Also, Crawford's a fine guy to throw out there for a game. Like, yes. he's not going to kill you. He hit the ball hard today, right at somebody, unfortunately. Like, I never feel like he doesn't have a chance to get a hit. He I always agree. has a chance. So, it's fine with me. 
that I, but I did want to point that out. I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, I've, I'll say it again. Magic get too much credit when they win it, too much blame when Mason they lose. Win, by the way, looks great. Well, I, he's, we, I got that. Well, I want to talk to him in a, about him in a minute too. But I thought, uh, I thought Ali managed a really good series despite yeah. the fact that they lost two or three. And people say, well, they lost two or three, didn't they? he's not out there hitting and he's not out there pitching. They could have won so all three relax. easily. They I easily thought. could have. Um, let me let's talk about this just a little bit before we get to the. Brewers, by the way, thank you all for listening. Greatly appreciate Brewers. everybody. The comments have been awesome lately, by the way, on YouTube. Wish I could find them if they're out there on Spotify and Apple. <laughs> I think they are. I, I think have, they are. I have, I have no idea how to find them. But for those of you listening on Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever you are, thank you so much. Please hit that subscribe. Hit that follow button. Find us on Twitter. Man, this is this this is our season. This is for all of us right here. You fans, all of us. This is what we do. Um, one thing I want to talk a little bit about, how about the attendance? Like that's yeah. something I that's something that we we've said it before. The one thing that will wake up Bill DeWitt Jr. or Bill DeWitt and Bill DeWitt Jr. or Jr. and third, whatever they are, right, is the attendance. And you know, the tweet put out today by Jeff Jones essentially, uh, with a sunny gray start. you I mean, I I I said our prized offseason uh free agent. He is like that is the your number one guy that you picked up was thirty one thousand. Now, understand they report tickets sold. They don't report who goes through. So that number who goes through the turnstiles guaranteed lower than that 31,000. Oh, it was, guaranteed. it was, that stadium was like half full. So it was probably like around 20. And, and today they reported 33,000. There looked like to be about 8,000 people there. So they're going to report not, not, tickets not sold. Even, but yeah. they're, they're not going to report who's there, right? No. So they're not reporting that. Um, and he said the lowest uh, for a night game in Bush 3 history. I mean, I don't care if it's during the week. They've played hundreds That's of games. Crazy on school nights. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That that's with the Phillies in town. It's not like they were playing the A's. Yeah. The can't call them the Oakland A's or the Sacramento A's or the, the A's. just the A's. But can't call, but like do you see what I'm saying? I that's it's gonna weird. be something to watch going forward. And and I think do you think it has let me ask you this. Battle Hawks open this weekend. You got the city going, right? St. Louis City's going. Like do you think I mean there's only a limited amount of entertainment dollars and I understand that baseball is still the cheapest. I get that. But I, I wonder if people it's so are so cheap picking... to get in now, by the way. It's like five um, bucks I had to get a ticket. Buddies who went the other day, they got tickets for three dollars. Yeah. Three dollars. So that's yeah. included in your ticket sales, but you just took a massive cut on that. No, most of those are third party, but I think I go like like sub hub things like that. They're most of those are third party that's vendors. True. That's a valid that price. Point. Um, but that's that's also like it's that's supply and demand. So third party vendors, the prices are good to look at if you look if you want to look at how many what the supply and demand is. Um, when they're going down, that means these these people are having trouble selling them, which means people aren't going. Um, so I think I think a lot of it, honestly, is there's a massive disconnect between the organization and the fan base right now. And even like I think their off is turning out to be pretty solid so far. I think they've gotten really good returns on the bullpen. I think obviously early returns on Sonny were awesome. Early returns on Lance Lynn have been really positive. You and know, on Gibby, won- yeah, we'll see. Half. Right, we have one great, one tough, but that's also like he's a five star. So who cares? Um, so I think, but I do think there's a bigger disconnect between the fans in the front office than there ever has been. And I'm not a Mo hater. I think he's fine. I think he's done a lot of great in my lifetime for the Cardinals. Um, but I do think a lot of people don't appreciate how he talks to them. And not that that always matters a ton, but when he is the face of the Cardinals, and he is um, the face of all the moves they make and everything that happens, I just think he turns some people off with how he talk, how he's talked to them the last two years. Almost like, like when he was kind of like, we're upping payroll. He's like, well, it went up a little bit. I, didn't I say it was just going up? You know, things like that. And it, they're starting to turn people off. The thing that's going to cure it is winning. But I think a lot of people are like, I don't know if this team's going to win. And, you know, it's expensive to just go to the ballpark. We're talking about the $3 tickets. Yeah, but then you add a $5 fee. So they're now $8 tickets. Then you pay $30 to park. You have the hassle of getting to the stadium and you pay $100 to eat for four people. Like, so there's a lot of reasons, I think. But I do think ultimately, if this team is as good as I think they can be, it'll fix itself. Um, let's get to the Diamondback series, and then after that, we'll talk about some players specifically. Okay, uh, you open Friday night with Matsy, uh, with, with at the Matsy. pool, there in uh, Arizona, right against Brendan. F- is it Fat or Fat or whatever Fott. it is? There we go. I thought so. Who has not been great this year? Five point oh six. It's early. Year. It's early. Um, 
like to see Matt like, continue and build on what we've seen so far. 1-0 and with a 1.74 ERA. We know Arizona's going to rake. That top of the lineup, dude, is loaded. When you've got Corbin Carroll and you've got Cattell Marte, who looks like 25-year-old Cattell Marte again. Christian Walker. We talk about Mookie Betts being the most underrated player maybe in baseball. Christian Walker might be number two. Nobody talks about Christian Walker the way they should, in my well. opinion. A. You know you overpaid for him in our fantasy league. I don't don't care. He's killing it right now, and I am seven and two in the league. So Josh Naylor's killing it for me too. So, um, you've got Suarez, who was an, a sneaky pickup for them because I mean you add him into that lineup, replace Longo. You know him. that the defense with Alec Thomas in center field is they're going to play well. Uh, that I I really really like this Diamondbacks team, and we've talked about Tori Lovello on here. You know he had some terrible years, but they stuck by him, and it's paid off in spades. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be an intriguing series, but I really would I'm really intrigued by the Stephen Matt start on Friday night against the Diamondbacks. I like the matchup. A lot of their better hitters are are lefties. Um, Corbin Carroll, Cathal Marquez is a switch hitter, but he's better. He he used to kill lefties, but now he's kind of flipped. It's weird. I think sometimes switch hitters just like Ozzy Albies does that too sometimes, where he's better against one side randomly than the other. Um, but I do like that matchup mainly because Corbin Carroll scares me. And if you have a lefty against him, it makes me feel a little bit better. Um, yeah, that's it's a big it's a big series, I think. Like, and it's as big as a series in April can be, I guess. Like, you need to make a statement here against this team that's gonna be really good. Uh, and I really like Steven Matz to be the one to set the tone because he's just been so good. And if he can do it again and it's three starts in a row to start a year, like we talk about snowball effects that can go negatively. Like that could be a snowball effect that turns him into back into 2021 Steven Matz, the guy that we signed. So yeah, we've talked we've talked a lot about this 16 game stretch. This is the end of it. Right. And right now you're essentially right at almost right at 500. Um, Saturday, you get Kyle Gibson versus Ryan Nick or Nelson. If you are a gambler, bet the over. Don't, because it's always never obvious enough. It's nah, never, it's never hey, let me ask you something about this, okay? And maybe someone out there in, in our audience who are way smarter when it comes to gambling than you and I are can can do this, can explain this to me. I, I bet quite a bit on FanDuel lately on the no runs first inning, okay? And they hit. They made me quite a profit over the last week. Just and a half. about the Braves one. Well, they've hit like two of the last three by the way. However, um, here's my question. So you go on FanDuel where, where you go to quick bets and all your bets are right there, right? If you bet on runs, total runs, first inning, this was the, this was just one example that happens almost half the games. Tigers pirates yesterday runs, total runs, first inning zero was minus minus one twenty. Okay. That's, that's good. That's fine. But then right underneath it, they have over under first inning runs scored 0.05. The under was minus 112. Can you make that make sense to me? Because in both cases, it's fucking zero. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't how know how can you – how is the line eight points different? Like, I don't – I took the minus 112, obviously. But can you yeah, – weird. Should they not be exact – am I missing something? Can you score half a same. run in baseball? You can't. They should be the same. That's weird. I don't know. Anyway. Take the over, Ryan Nelson versus uh, Gibby. I'm take. I am taking that's an, the over. That, that seems important for Kyle Gibson to have a solid start. We need a quality agree. start out of him that game. Like I'm not. I'm not. And honestly, like he was really bad in the first two innings of that start uh, on Sunday. But the fact that he was able to come back and throw four shutout after that was big. Like I think he's going to be okay. I think he's going to be a 4.5 ERA guy with 190 innings, and we're going to look up and say he did his job. Yeah, I agree. And I think that game is huge also because you get Zach Gallon on Sunday. Yeah. Is that the first time? We don't face Zach Gallon very often, I feel like. No, we don't. Um, yeah, Zach Gallon's really good. Uh, who do we have throwing? Miles. Miles. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's tough. That's hey, a tough game. I should be, Win the first uh, he, two, guys. He, his last two, he's made me eat my words, to be fair. But he's it just is annoying. Solid. He's just scary to watch. Sometimes. He's just scary to watch pitch. I agree. Because like he just doesn't strike people out, and he hits a lot of people. Hit the ball he hits a lot of people. That's not what I meant. A lot of people hit hit the ball very hard. Um, which also that reminds me, I want to talk about the defense for a second. Mason Wynn and Nolan Gorman are as good as a, of a double play pair as I've seen since I've been alive in St. Louis. Is that true? In St. Louis, probably. I mean, I, Colton Wong and Paul DeYoung are really good. They were pretty good, but I don't think I've seen like Mason Mason Wynn takes it just to another level. Like he his does, arm and the plays he can make. Like I love Colton, I really do. He never he couldn't do some of those things. Like he just. Where's couldn't. Justin Turner now? 
He's raking right now for the Blue Jays. He's their only good hitter right now. He is not um, talking about how hard you throw the ball across. Anyway, no. um, I, we, we talked about it last week. I, I know, but I think Nolan Gorman might win a gold glove. That would be so – I'd be so pumped for him if he did. Dude, he and, and this is also obviously small sample size, but I was starting to feel this way last year that he was getting severely underappreciated because of the narrative around him his rookie year, which was fair. He wasn't very good his rookie year. Right. But he looks great out there. Like, like legitimately – like he's now to the level of Arenado for me, where it's like the ball's hit hit the ball his way. You know, like when you're in the stands, you're like, please just hit the ball to Arenado so we can get out of this inning. Like that's how I feel about Gorman now. Hit the ball to him, you're out. Yeah, yeah it's great. I'm very happy yep. for him. Uh remember the Pedro Guerrero story with the Dodgers when they were getting to the end of the one of the big games and uh they said, Pedro, what were you thinking out there? And he said, please don't hit the ball to me. Please don't hit the ball to me. And they said, <laughs> like were you thinking? And game. they said, were you thinking anything else? And he said, please don't hit the ball to Sachs either. <laughs> <laughs> if we remember, poor Steve Sachs could not throw the ball to first base. So no, I think that's not. a hilarious Pedro Guerrero. Yeah, the, the lot the of IPS. good, lot of good Pedro Guerrero stories out there, by the way. Anyway, um, a few guys I want to talk about. We talked about Mason a little bit. When do we start to get concerned a little bit about Jordan Walker and his swing? Um. I I'm not concerned at all. Like he's 21 years old. So for concerned for this year, I don't know. He has a, like around a 60% ground ball percentage. That's alarming. That's very, very high. I, here's what I'm concerned about. Okay. And I don't know if this means anything and I'm never going to be the guy that's all on the hitting coach. Cause I think that's stupid. Same. However, there were a lot of problems I was seeing in spring training with these hitters, just from things. I'm like, they're mechanically off. He's hitting the ball on the ground too much. Like Goldie looked a little bit off. Arenado looked off. And nothing seems to be getting fixed. And that to me is like who – I think the game plan against starting pitching has been awful, to be quite honest. They haven't hit any starters very well at all this year. Like they've hit – Mark was Waldron the only one they really lit up a starter this year so far? Yeah, they hit around Weathers early but didn't really put a lot of numbers. They only up scored like him. one or two runs Right, that's, what, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So I'm starting to get a little bit confused at what the game plan is here. But also like for Walker specifically, no, I'm not concerned. Um you know, anyone that goes through a month where they're batting 200, like if he goes through this month and ends it batting 215, you know, with like an OPS of like 600, everyone's worst month is going to look similar to that in a year. He's at a 481 OPS right now. Yeah, but he hits a homer and a double and it skyrockets. Like it's where it's still 13 games into the season. I, if that's his worst 13 good. game stretch of the year, he's fine. You know, what that's I mean? what I wanted to hear. But it just seems like, like that is he wasn't great in spring training, and this is a little bit of a concern. Like I'm with you, but and but now, he's hit a I couple of balls that I think would have been homers in June. Like he's flown out to center field to the wall like three times. Yeah, I agree. So I I don't like yeah he needs to get the ball off the ground more. I think something I'm noticing, and I we talked about this last episode because Eduardo Perez opened my eyes to it on Sunday Night Baseball, is he he is so self conscious now about not hitting the ball into the ground that he's just flying open before the pitch is even getting to him, and it's causing him to ground out because he's his making his bat six inches shorter. So he he'll be okay. I think he'll be okay. Um, few things also. Let, we have to talk about. We talked about it last time. I don't know. Victor Scott cannot start in center field anymore for the St. Louis Cardinals. And it's not because of today. Please. Everybody wants to think that it was because of today. I even saw like a post about, I don't remember who did it, but about how they're worried that if they send him down, he'll think it was about today. Like if, if, if you think, is that who it was? Okay, Brent, whoever it was, like you, if you can't be concerned yourself about that. That's not a thing. That, I agree. If, if, if he is that weak minded, that that is what oh, you're concerned okay, about losing. Don't call him weak-minded. I'm not. He's not. I'm saying that he's not. It's baseball's tough, and I'm sure he's going it through it right now. Dude. Absolutely. Like, like, also, I'm pissed off about this. Is the the rule on? Okay, so he obviously got the infield single today. They tagged him out because he turned towards second. I thought the rule was you have to like mo- be motioning to go to second base. I think that 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 is what it is, but I think it's at the umpire. He wasn't discretion. doing that. I think. Well, here's what I think happened. That was bullshit. That was complete and total bullshit. I. I completely agree with you. I think once an umpire sees them turn left, they're in their mind that they, they want to take trying. all subjects. God, that's not so letting annoying. me answer the question. I, I'm not. I, it's just so frustrating to me. Like, I think they want to take stupid. all subjectivity out of the rule. That's what I think. I don't know. But he would, like here's the thing: if a guy is not panicking and scrambling back to first base, he wasn't trying to go to second. There also was no reason for him to turn left. To be fair, none. I, I agree, but he was just turning around. Like obviously, don't no. Do that. It was off. more of a turn than just Hold on, that. but he wasn't trying to run. Like, that was not what he was I, doing. 
I agree. Either way, let's get back to the original. This has always comment. been the rule, I've, I thought. Please understand so. that I do not believe that Victor Scott is weak-minded. I was not saying that. I'm saying you can't you can't run an organization being concerned that a guy gets demoted and was worried that it was because of a bad game. That's all I'm saying. No, no, and you also, but you also, and here's the thing, and we've been, I've been saying this the whole time that I didn't want Victor in the major leagues, not because I don't think he's good, and I've we've gone over this. Like I think he's good. I think he's I been productive him. when he's played. He's a he's a really good young kid. He's going to be really good for a long time. However, dude, he you could not look at me in the look me in the eyes like some of these beat writers are doing. And tell me that he's not overmatched. What no. are you watching? Watch the games. Don't right. look at box scores. I'm getting I'm getting really annoyed at this because it it seriously seems like these people make predictions and they make um cases for why guys should be on the roster and they have it's to stick to him no matter what. They stick it's to him no matter training. what. If you are watching this game and you're watching him play baseball right now, and you are trying to tell me he does not look overmatched, you don't know what you're watching. I so agree. Stop. I agree. By it's the way, nope, that's something for you to remember here in the next year or two when you are doing this. OK, so remember that Like, because I so agree 100 um, percent. Look, last let me ask you this, because on air, you gave me one of those side eyes when I said your option is to play Michael Ciani in center field as if that shouldn't be an option. Remember, we talked about this last time. Mm-hmm. That should definitely be an option at this point. If you're He's not going to put Friday, apparently I get it. What I'm saying is if you're not going to put Newbar in center field, mm-hmm. and we talked about that last time with the injury concerns, yada, yada, yada. Michael Ciani, he has, I understand it's a small sample size, but he does have a 762 OPS okay, versus Victor Scott's 299. That's all I get. I, I understand I get it, but, he, but just don't my point is, up, here's my, I will say, I, I said this today on Twitter, right? Your options are A, you, you uh, leave Victor Scott in there. You have good defense, terrible offense, and but you have run defense, to, like. Hold on, let me finish. And you run the potential of uh, stagnating his development. A lot of people out there, by the way, thinking that that means we think he's now going to be terrible and you've ruined his career. That's not what people, I believe, are saying. But you are hurting his development. That that is yeah. that is. It's fair. just. Or, it's just. I want. Hold, hold on. Well, I want. I want to piggyback off that for one second, because people keep saying that like he needs to learn how to hit major league pitching. Okay, yeah, of course. But what I'm so what I think is really valuable, and people just overlook this constantly, is being able to fail and it not mean anything. Right. Victor Scott needs to learn how to drive the balls in the gaps and hit doubles. Because right now, what pitchers are doing is they're throwing balls up in the zone and saying, "I dare you to burn somebody," and he can't do it. And, and they're, they're only good, throwing they're fastballs, by the way. That's up in it. the zone, up in yep. the zone every time because they know he's going to fly out. Like stop telling me, oh, we hit a ninety-four. Okay, it's an out. Every single time, it's an out. Because when you hit a ball in the air, you have to hit it harder for it to fall. Okay? We can all understand that and agree. So they are using that against him, his power. They're playing middle depth. They're not letting him bunt. They're bringing the infielders in. And they're saying, I dare you to burn my outfielders. And he cannot do it right now. So what he needs to do is he needs to go to AAA. He needs to develop some more bat speed. He needs to develop some more exit velocity. Get his angles better. And know that when he goes 0 for 20, it doesn't matter. Up here, it matters to where now he's trying to bunt to get on because he knows we have to win a baseball game today. And Triple A, yeah, you want to win, but nobody cares if you don't. So correct, correct. it's like it, it's learning how to fail without it meaning you're letting an entire city down. That's the weight it's, that's on these people's shoulders. And it's wild to me the realize it. It's wild to me the people that are still doubling down on it like that. I've seen a lot of this on Twitter, and obviously this is just Twitter, whatever. But it's like just because you believed he should have made the team out of spring training doesn't mean now that we're two weeks in, you can't look at the situation and reassess it. Uh, we were happy for him like that. I'm always happy yeah. for the player. But the fact was he would not be there if the Cardinals didn't completely screw up the situation. They could have gone out and signed a Michael Taylor. They could have gone out and signed an Adam Duvall before it's, the break. Tommy Pham's still available. They, they they could have gone out and signed a Billy Hamilton to simply get me a stopgap guy. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I you could have been still Seattle out play. there. You so, But that was where I was going before. That's your option is, A, you let Victor Scott, and, and that is the, screwing his development, or B, you put Michael Ciani in there. You still have really good defense, probably better than Victor right now because Victor's reads have not been great at times. If we're going to be really They've honest, been bad. he makes, just really he makes up with it with speed. Yes. And you might not ha- get great offense. We don't know what you're going to get from Michael Ciani because we haven't given him the opportunity, but you're also not going to ruin the development of your top prospect, which seems to me like right. a no brainer. So yeah, either put Ciani in center field. He's on your roster, by the way, you've, you valued him enough to keep him on defense, the roster. Too. 
put him in center field, hit him ninth, and don't even stress about what he does anymore. Or yeah. you got to put Lars Newbar in center field and then st- worry about him getting hurt for the long haul. And now you're back to Victor Scott versus Michael Ciani. Yeah, uh, and this conversation is kind of pointless right now because Katie Wood just tweeted that Pedro Pajes is going down and Lars Newbar is coming up for Friday. So Victor Scott will be on the roster. However, um, in the event that Vic can continue to struggle, and guys, please know, I hope, that tomorrow he goes four for four and he goes on a tear and I am wrong. I hope well, that don't, happens. They don't for play his tomorrow, sake. so let's hope so. Okay, too. on Friday. Well, actually, it will, after it would be tomorrow when they're that's watching true. This. That's true. Valid. Um, but I, I hope that happens. I'm rooting for him. I, I root, I root for every Cardinal. I'm rooting for him in general. I think he's going to be a really good player for a long time. However, in the event that he struggles again and they're like, okay, we this is enough. Pull in the plug. You, Yvonne Herrera has made it to where you have to put Lars Newbar in center field. Because yes. you need to have Herrera, Contreras, Nupar, and Donovan all in the same lineup. Like, they all four have to be out there. Do you if believe Goldie that- and Arenado aren't hitting, like, the way that they need to be hitting, someone else has to pick up the slack, and those four can do it. Does it concern, concern you, then, that Pajes is the one going down, and you think they will continue to do so without a third catcher on said roster? It doesn't concern me. Uh, I think they're just – I think – They've asked Ali, and his answer was, I'm more comfortable dropping the DH if I have to because these two guys need to be in my lineup right now. You know what's interesting is you look at the top four prospects in the last five, three years. Mm-hmm. Gorman, Walker, Wynn, Scott. Okay? Um, last two years. Whatever. Their handling of Gorman, even though we wanted him up earlier, ended up fair, essentially paying dividends with for Nolan Gorman. Win. And here, right. Their handling of Mason Wynn was damn near perfect. Like to be honest with you, damn near perfect. Look at what and look at how, what he's doing. Then on the odd, odd opposite side, they're handling of Jordan Walker and Victor Scott, not as good as the other two. And we have seen massive struggles from both of them at the big league levels. By the way, to be expected. I mean, we see struggles. Well, we saw the same for Mason Wynn too. I, I'm just, you know, I, it just feels like. The confidence of Wynn was because he was able to get his footing at AAA. The confidence of Gorman was he had such success at AAA, even though we yeah. saw bouts of outs. Like, that's what Nolan Gorman's going to do. That's who he's going to yeah, be probably his entire he, career. See yeah. Kyle Schwarber, right? Only he, only he mm-hmm. can play defense. Big difference. Um, it yeah. just feels like yeah. their handling of those four, it almost feels like massive polar opposites. And it almost – I'm not going to say this, that they did this, but it almost feels like the fans – like yelling for Victor Scott and uh, having a great spring training and Jordan Walker, same way last year played more of a role than it should. I'm not saying they did that. That's just it. That's those are optics that are out there. Yeah. I've got a couple of thoughts. One, they didn't, it was so obvious. They didn't want Victor Scott to be on this team. They wanted Dylan Carlson to be on the team. And he wasn't um, going to be, to be fair. Right. Exactly. So I don't think it was for optics at all in that situation. I think that was genuinely them like, Oh my God, we need to get something out of this position and we don't think Michael Stiani can give us that. That's what I think it was. Um, and then my other thought is on the Walker situation, Walker had a really good year last year. He was he really did. solid. So like is 13 games going to change my opinion of how they handled him? No, I don't think they handled him well defensively, but he looks pretty like not good, but he looks fine. He doesn't look like he's going to kill you out there right now. So I think Walker's going to end up having the best offensive year on the team. I'm standing by that. Uh, I still believe in him. I really do. He's hitting a lot of balls on the ground, man. People go through slumps. It's just everything's so magnified when it's at the beginning of the year. Cause then you look at their stat line and their stat line is their slump. You know what I mean? When, when, if he's, you know, had a really good month and then a really bad 13 game stretch in May and you look at his stats, he's still at a 750 OPS and doesn't look that bad. Um, I agree. I agree. I just think that those are interesting things to look at because the handling of Jordan Walker last year was still not, done well yeah i will also say that handling of prospects is so tough it is people that like are really angry when jackson holiday is not called up because it's service time manipulation but then there's also like maybe there is reasons to do it maybe there's not like when are guys ready no one knows the truth is no one knows jared kelnick everyone in the world thought he was ready he wasn't so the truth is nobody has any clue when anyone's ready you kind of just got to figure it out let's also not forget mike trout came up struggled and they had and got sent back down to triple a yeah it's the greatest hitter of our generation of your generation, not mine. Of your generation. Mike Trout's the greatest hitter of your generation. Yep. Um, Who's the greatest hitter of your generation? Barry I think it was Bonds? Tony Gwynn. I think it was Tony Gwynn or Barry Bonds. I think you can go it's either Barry, way. Like, pure hitter, it, pure hitter is, is Tony Gwynn, but overall it was Barry Bonds. I, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> no, Barry Bonds both ways. Just look at the Gwynn stats against all of the stud pitchers that he faced. They're not even real. Barry like, Bonds they feel like, had like a 600 on base percentage one year. I'm just just saying, those two guys. That's those, those, that's my answer. Those two guys are better hitters They're than Mike Trout. They're both great. Yeah, I'm saying. Um, Wait, no, okay. no, 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 no. 
But I would not take Tony Gwynn over Mike Trout. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's talk. There's one more thing I really want to talk about before we get out of here. Um, Jordan Hicks. Start one, five innings pitch, no earned runs, one hit, one walk, six Ks. Second start, seven innings pitch, one earned run, five hits, no walks, five Ks. Today, six earned, six innings pitch, one earned run, four hits, two walks, two Ks. In 18 innings, he has a one ERA and a .83 whip. Uh, and Tyler mm-hmm. O'Neill leads the world in home runs in Boston. Now, you can say I, – I, I, this is the most interesting thing to me. We've talked about it ad nauseum. When you watch the guys who leave St. Louis – and the success that they immediate success that they have is, do you believe that this is a coincidence or do you believe that there is something amiss in the St. Louis Cardinals dugout locker room, front office management, or I don't know the answer, but at some point you like, I've heard people, wise men say there's no such thing as coincidences. Right. Yeah. And when you start to look at this, it seems like, no other organ. You can't point this out to any other organization. You just can't. Except the Pirates, maybe right, because of Cole and Glass now and those great, right? But that's the pi- Pirates going to pirate. Yeah. So I, I'm mean, first of all, shout out to Tyler. Shout out to Jordan Hicks. I am so I've tweeted both. I'm so pumped for both of them. Um, I hope they both stay healthy and I hope they both are all stars and and continue it throughout the season. But where mm-hmm. where do you stand on that? Because like I was really thinking about this today. Again, there's no such thing as coincidences, and when you add it to all of the other guys that have left St. Louis, that maybe were never given the same shot or whatever it is, fill in the blank, and they go on to have really strong success at other places. It just feels weird to me. Yeah, I don't think coincidences repeat themselves as often as this has. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can't just be – it's not a coincidence if you can now draw a correlation, you know, causation, correlation, that whole thing. There's there's a correlation here. Is there a causation? I don't know. Um Here's here's what I'll say. One, George, for Jordan Hicks, it's a little bit frustrating because they never gave him a chance to be what he's becoming in San Francisco. Now, whether or not this lasts, I don't know. I hope it does for his sake. I love Jordan. Um, full disclosure, met Jordan a bunch of times when I worked there. Very nice guy. I'm always, I'll always root for Jordan Hicks. Um, I think he's an, a supremely talented player. We've all known that. He never got the chance to be what he could be as a starter here, and now we're seeing it. I think there's a guy on this team right now that if he were to do the same thing Hicks is doing, He'd make us feel a very similar way, and that's Ryan Helsley, who they never gave a chance to be a starter. Um, Andre Pallante. Yeah. When it, yeah, to a lesser degree, but yeah, I think he'd be a good starter. Alex Reyes. The list goes on. Like, dude, the Alex list Reyes goes- was injuries, though. I- um, but, my, but for Tyler O'Neill, they gave him every opportunity, and he had a great year here in 2021, and then he was it was injuries, injuries, injuries. That's not on the Cardinals. Oh, I'm not. That's what I'm saying. So for Hicks, I bl- I would blame the Cardinals. For O'Neill, I don't. That I would separate him. It's just so weird, isn't it? Like it is. But O'Neill so could like pull weird. a hamstring tomorrow, and it's like the same thing of he was course. in the last three years with the Cardinals. Knock on wood. I really hope he doesn't. I don't want to put that out there. Like I don't want him to do that. But I'm saying like if that were to happen, how many times do we see O'Neill have a really good two week stretch here the last few years and then get hurt? That's the same okay. thing he'd be doing. It does feel like the Boston Fenway Park is made for Tyler O'Neill. Yeah, but he's done most of this. He's only played one game at home. I know. That's crazy. That's my, that's my point, though. Like, mm-hmm. Bush Stadium, there were a lot of balls we saw Tyler O'Neill hit. And you can say this about Nolan and Goldie, and you just talked about Walker. Didn't they not get out in a lot of other parks? They're out. Or they're in, in Boston. They're off the wall for a double for Tyler O'Neill. Donovan the other day hit a ball to left center. That ball, I think it was Alvarado or Soto. They would have tied the game on uh, game one against the Phillies. That, I think I said was gone in 19 out of 30 Major League Stadiums. Yeah, that's – I, I just feel like he's – built to play in boston right it just feels that yeah. way canadian needs to be in boston that just feels also right like me. playing in left field there for him is gonna be so good on his body because there's just no room to maneuver um just to look around a little bit around the league first of all massive fucking before shout we out do to that we, oh sorry we never right gave up talking well okay but we continuously like waiting to do our predictions until the very end of the podcast all right all right for our series okay you we ready start doing that after we're talking about that like, okay yeah. so this is my first optimistic one I okay. think we're taking – no, well, I was optimistic on the Marlins. I think we take two out of three. I think we take the first two and lose to Zach Allen. That's my – that's what I think. Okay. And uh, and game two, slugfest, 10-8. to eight. Okay. I think um, – I think they lose two out of three. Okay. Oh, no. You're trying to – that's devil's advocate, bro. You're just trying to get on the board no. with these with – these No, archers. honestly, I am I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Obviously, I hope they sweep them. But I – 
I can't have them winning every series this year. I've had them winning every series in our splitting. Like, I, that's, that's not going to happen. Why it's you're one and not. three, dude. Yeah, I, I hope I'm one and four after this. Like I want I want them to win this series. Here's my here's my key. Okay, and then we can move on to what you want to talk about. I don't pitchers, I just don't know. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Steven Matz is my pitcher. But I think it's it could end up being really good for Golding Arenado to get back to Arizona, familiar ballpark for them. It's going to be warm. They're going to be in a place they know. Goldie, obviously, an incredible amount of success there in his career. And Arnado's had a lot of success there. I think this is a really good series from the get right before going to Oakland. And if that happens, they might sweep them. Because if they, they are they, they are one of – well, they're going to Oakland. They're not going to Sacramento. Um, they are one of Goldie, Arnado being hot from being like 9-4 and four right now. So if one of those two gets hot, they're gonna be on a really good streak here. I think my my picks to click are are also with you. I'm going Matt and Goldie. I just think Goldie goes. This is Goldie. Back. I'll go Arenado. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. That that's my those are my guys. So I'm yeah. taking them two yeah, and or three, I, and I'll go Goldie and Matt. I hope you're right because I just eventually have to go that they're losing one. Right. I can't just continue to say they're gonna win every one, even though in my heart I think they're sweeping because I'm an idiot. Yeah, I've been pretty pessimistic on most of them. So that's the key uh, of this series is keeping Corbin Carroll off the freaking bases. Yeah, I, but I that's mean, hard to do. It is. It really is. I, I'm intrigued to see how they use Willie and Herrera. Willie catches two games and Herrera catches one, and they're all both in the lineup. I don't think Wilson catches two of the three. You think you think you think those leave him a DH and let him? I, get I healthy? think with how good with how good Herrera's been. I think it would make so much sense to just let Wilson get fully healthy before catching again. Agreed 100%, which also does surprise you with the Pahe being sent down instead of Victor yeah. Scott. And it, and it's a little bit frustrating then because if you're doing this, the Cardinals don't face a lefty, right? No. No. So then it's like, well, how are you going to get Donovan, Gold, Gorman, and Nupar all in every game? You you can't start Victor Scott. Caleb, you just can't. Well, you have if he's with you, you have to. You cannot have you, him sitting. You don't have to. You you can put. I mean, I'm I'm not. We, well, they should be in AAA. This, That's just stupid. Then. We uh, yes, but it. But if we can't go sitting, down this road when we know it's not realistic. Dan. So you're, like, so not you're gonna, gonna have be, him up and sit him. So then you're gonna be sitting Donnie, Newbar, or Willie, Herrera. or Herrera, or Wilson. Who's yeah, your, I don't one know. of your best hitters right now, and Donovan is your best hitter. I mean, unless they're sitting Walker, which would like that'd be stupid. You gotta get him going. He he's a big part of what you're doing. I think, and I also want to address one more thing here. I keep seeing people say, move Goldie, Nolan, move Walker, bench, whoever. Guys, if those three aren't good, this team isn't going anywhere. Agree. You need yes. to get them going. I, I This is starting to frustrate me because I think this happens everywhere. But, like, if you're the Yankees and Juan Soto and Aaron Judge are struggling, you don't move them because if they're bad, you're not winning games. Like, for the Cardinals put all, like it or not, the Cardinals have put their eggs in the Golden Arenado basket for the entirety of their contracts because of what they're paying them, right? Yes. So, if trust them. Believe in them. And if, if you're going to go down and they end up being bad and you end up losing a lot of games, you have to retool, then go down with the Hall of Famers, please. It's possible I'm being haunted in my closet. What's Hold happening? On. I don't know. Okay, so, sorry if you're on audio only. I don't know how to describe what's happening. <laughs> there was a cat. Was that there was, was a cat. Figured. Literally, the clothes were moving back. And, I swore I was going to be had right here on live, live okay. TV or whatever you hear it is. what I said at least? I, no. Literally, I thought I was going to die. Okay. I was saying, people are saying to move Goldie Donovan. Uh, Goldie oh, yeah, Walker. yeah. I got you. I agree. You got to like, keep him in go the down with Go down with your best players. Also, can we be forward. fair? Who are you going to put in for them? I Someone, someone today... Someone today said to put Walker at third base for two things here. One, no, he Walker didn't. Hasn't no, third that base didn't happen. Two, go, go to my tweets. I get quote tweeted. I'm not. I'm not. Walker hasn't played third base in two years. Two, even with Arenado being bad, he's been better than Walker. So and it's always going about? to be better there. He's been better than him offensively, Dad. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, we get I, – I, I, I always say I'm leaving Twitter. I, I should because it does hurt my head. But it's, it's so, so damn weird. fun. And I do get it. I do get that there are different expectations for Arenado than there is for Walker. There should be. Like, Arenado's a hall, on a Hall of Fame a highway, I mean, track right now, where where if he doesn't pick highway. it up in these, next, in, these, in these next few years, he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame. Like, he's he's heading for a pretty dangerous spot if he doesn't pick it up here. Um, that, so That highway from Albany to Cooperstown, that's the one he's yeah, on. I, I just – I do you think Arenado's cooked? No, I don't. I don't either. I don't either. No, I don't. I don't. Okay, final thing, and then we'll get out of here. Um, massive shout-out to Jackson Holiday for getting the call. 
Uh, super cool move by the Holiday family. Classy. Not surprised that they called the Ripken family to ask about Jackson wearing number seven. For those of you who don't know, that was obviously Cal Sr.'s number um, forever. has. I don't think it's been worn since Cal Sr. wore it uh, and finally ended his career as a manager or third base coach, whatever he ended it as. I don't remember which he was there at the end. Um, and the family, 100% on board. If you haven't watched, you get the interview with Billy Ripken on MLB Central. Pretty fantastic. Um, I, I'm, I'm pumped he's wearing his dad's number. I'm pumped that he's wearing – uh, Cal Ripken's number. I'm pumped that the Ripken family's on board, and I'm pumped that he's in the big leagues. It's good for baseball. Somebody asked me what I thought was going to like, what I thought his future was. I think he's going to be a perennial All Star, and I think he's going to be better than his pops. That's what I'll say. And that's not a shot at Matt Holiday, by the way. We've been preaching on here for like two years now. Reasonable expectations. I didn't say Matt right Holiday off the bat. I said career is as close to a Hall of Famer offensively. As you can be without being a Hall of Famer. So yeah. unless Jackson Holiday is a Hall of Famer, which is an outrageous expectation to put on any human being, please don't say that. I do. That's, That's what wild. I believe. He's already fighting an uphill battle because he's playing second base. And they don't yeah. allow very many second basemen in the Hall of Fame. Um, Jeff Kent's not in. So you think he's going to be better than well, Jeff Kent? We know why Jeff Kent's not in. That's true. People don't like him. Um, Correct. Writers don't like him. I don't know about other people. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to say he's going to be better than his dad. Go look at his dad's stats. They're outrageous. I get it. Um, I just have a like feeling a this kid is so special. <laughs> Dude, Matt Holiday was special. It was like a 900 OPS for his career. Was it that high? Yes. Matt Holiday's like legitimately good. one of the best hitters of my lifetime. No, I, I'm not arguing. There's zero argument. Like, what I was saying was not a diss at his dad. Hold it's on. No, say, we're looking I at think... this because I think – so eight, he has a, he's at thirty two percent above league average for his career. Yeah, I I agree. I just have this feeling that he's Dude, going to be no. There. Let's just admit that you didn't realize how good Matt Holiday was. No, I did absolutely. I did. Then what then did you your say? expectations here are outrageous. They are. I agree. You gotta take Go it, take it. that back. That's no, just I'm not. not. I'm not. Three hundred sixteen homers, two ninety nine career batting average. 380 OBP, 510 slug for his career. Just wait till you look back in 15 years. 1,200 RBIs, 2,100 hits. Dude. Yeah, I get it. The odds of him being better than Matt Holiday are like less than 1%. Fine, I'll take him. I hope he is. That'd be great. That'd be great, but that's just Matt Holiday was awesome. Don't. Um, The Pirates are 9 and 3, and the Yankees are 10 and 2. Do you see anything in in either of those? Yankees are very good. The Pirates aren't, and they'll be bad. Just like last year. Yeah, the Pirates are going to be good in a couple of years, I think. Like, like Jones is really good, that young pitcher. Jared Jones, I think is his name. Yeah. Um, Paul Skeens is obviously tearing up AAA, as we all knew what yes. happened. Um, and I think Mitch Keller is a really good starter as well. So those three are going to be relatively scary, I think, if they can all hopefully be healthy. But I just don't like their offense at all. Shot at Marco Gonzalez. Um, so you don't, you're not buying into Connor Joe, is what you're saying. <laughs> no. I'm not. He cancer survivor though. He has a pretty cool story. If you want to go look it up, they've got some young. They got some young guys down there in that double A, triple A area too that are going to probably be here before you know it. Uh, you first watch the, doing? I'm honestly, I'm not sure. That's a great question. I haven't seen when you have when you have Derek Shelton running it. I I love him. Uh, big fan of his. I think that's a good guy to have in charge there. If O'Neill and Cabrian Hayes stay healthy, um, you know, you never know. Brian Reynolds, you just never know. Brian Hayes can start pitting the ball on the ground every at bat. Um, then he'll be good. Uh, Henry Davis five twelve OPS, so not great, not great. No, nope, um, not great. But neither's no one. So it's still better than Jordan good, Walker's. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah, he has a four eighty OPS. There's no way he has two doubles. Is it? Really I, I don't bad? know what you want me to say. That's awful. Eesh. That's what I said earlier, and you said it was a thirteen game stretch. Remember? Yeah, but I don't four eighty one. 536. Did you update Five, it for today's game? Maybe not. I don't know. Minus 481. Point two war. Minus 481. Point two war. Yeah, um, Victor yeah. minus point four war, by the way, now. With his defense, it's supposed to be yeah. so good. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, well, let's get out of here then. And with day off tomorrow, well, on Thursday when this is be posted, but day off on Thursday, needed, much needed, I think. Get out to Arizona, probably go get some good Tex Mex, uh, some good food. Maybe play a little golf tomorrow if you're down. Max, it's not in Texas. Arizona, what's Arizona Max called? Just Mexican? Zona Max? Airy Max? I think they probably call it Mexican food. Mexican food. Go get some good Mexican food. 
Yeah, boom, nailed it. I'll do that every day. Nolan and Gorman also has hit the Diamondbacks really well, and he's from Arizona, so he might have a big series as well. Uh, Arizona nice. State or Arizona commit? It was one of the two. Arizona, maybe. The Wildcats, oh. I think, is where he was going to go. All right. All right, let's get out of here. All right? Um, oh, so wait, hold have, on. One more thing. Oh, one more geez, thing. Sorry. 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 <laughs> what do they need to go over these next two series for you to be happy? Four and two I'm only worrying three. about one series at a time. They play two or three. Okay. It's Oakland. Yeah, but we'll get to the Oakland series next week. You need to win two of three this weekend. That's what you need to do. Okay. First of all, it's set up. You've got Matt, you've got Gibson, you've got um, Miles. That I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's set up than having. But my point Brennan is, look, that, those, that's, that's, that's one guy you brought in. That's another guy you signed to be your starter two years ago, and that's the guy who right now is your number one pitcher, or well, number two pitcher. That's that's what you need. You need to take two of three from Arizona, who are not pitching great either. So. Yeah. And you, you get Zach Allen. Like, that's – Brennan Fodd has not been good. So, that's what you need. I can't get to Oakland yet. Okay. It's Oakland, so I figured we could at least, like, say something about it. Oakland's bad. They Take won two a series three. against Detroit. Good Lord. Can we yeah. get out of here? Sure. Hey, by the way, uh, tomorrow your mom and Emma are heading your way for Mom's Why Weekend. Why do we have so to have say that's on here? I just want to tell everybody, have fun for mom's weekend. Take care of them. They can us. That's fun. Although they might have to take care of you. I have seen you out and about, so it might be the other way around. Let's get out of here. (laughs) All right, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. It is French Quarter Fest down here in the 504. Pretty excited about that. It's mom's weekend in Champaign. Hopefully there's something awesome to do in St. Louis. There usually is. If nothing else, watch Cardinals baseball in Arizona. The late night starts are always the best. Uh, Everybody have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Go Cards.